Welcome back to Top Movie Recaps. Today I will show you a 2022 American superhero movie based on the Marvel Comics character called Morbius. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The movie begins in Costa Rica where a team of scientists arrives at a cave's entrance. The leader of the expedition, Dr. Michael Morbius, orders the team to set a trap at the entrance. He then steps forward and cuts his palm to lure the creature inside the cave to come out. Afterward, a swarm of bats begins flying out. The crew retreat to the helicopter, but Morbius stands still like he is still waiting for something. 25 years earlier in Greece, the scene moves to young Michael Morbius where Dr. Emil Nicholas introduces Lucian to him. Both of them suffer from a blood disease and the doctor is responsible for taking care of them. As they talk for the first time, Morbius immediately calls him Milo due to the last kid who was there being named that. After chatting for a while, Milo's machine suddenly malfunctions and he passes out. Morbius uses a spring from his pen to fix the machine and thanks to that, Milo awakens again. The doctor is flattered with Morbius' intelligence and plans to transfer him to an exclusive school in New York. After Morbius' departure, Milo is harassed by a group of bullies who later beat him down until Dr. Nicholas comes to save him. Long story short, the adult Morbius manages to obtain his doctoral degree by 19 years old and he is known for his effort to cure a bloodborne disease. Because of that, he is awarded a Nobel Prize in Sweden, but he rejected the award. He goes back to work where he treats Anna, who suffers from the same disease as him. In the hospital, Morbius works with his girlfriend, Dr. Martine Bancroft, who thinks that Morbius is pushing himself too hard. She also mentions a gentleman named Milo who is the benefactor of their project of remixing human DNA with bat DNA. Turns out that he kept the bats from the cave earlier to study more about them as he believes that bats could be the cure for the disease. Martine challenges his idea, so Morbius immediately tests his serum on a lab rat to prove his theory. However, it dies and Anna starts to have a seizure. They rush to Anna's room and manage to induce the coma before she has a stroke. Shortly after, Martine looks back at the lab and finds out that the lab rat starts moving. They conclude that the serum works. Morbius meets Milo and Nicholas, informing them about the breakthrough. The two go to the park where Morbius asks Milo for more money so that he can continue the experiments on international waters, since it's not completely legal. He warns Milo that they don't have much time left and Morbius has to move fast before it's too late for both of them, long story short. The ship embarks to international waters and Martine is also present there to assist Morbius. After ensuring the serum is safe, Morbius decides to conduct a human trial. Martine injects the serum into Morbius and then buckles him up to prevent anything bad from happening. A crew member suddenly gets into the lab and realizes that Morbius has broken free. They get into the isolation room and find Morbius crawling on the ceiling. The man tries to shoot he, but Morbius reacts faster and attacks him. A group of mercenaries arrives at the lab and one of them pushes Martine down, making her unconscious. Morbius, who has turned into a vampiric monster, breaks the glass and attacks all the mercenaries. He escapes from the lab and hunts the remaining survivors. After eliminating everyone on the ship, Morbius wakes up and regains his humanity while finding out that his body has transformed into a better shape. He goes to the control room and watches himself attacking the men and draining their blood from the surveillance cameras. Morbius initiates a mayday call, takes some serums with him, and jumps to the sea. The next day, FBI agents Simon Stroud and Rodriguez arrive at the ship to investigate the crime scene. They find Martine is still alive, but unfortunately, Morbius has wiped all the surveillance footage. Meanwhile, Nicholas and Milo learns of the incident from the news. Morbius returns to the hospital and immediately heads over to his lab where he consumes blood samples to quench his thirst. From a man who can barely walk. Morbius now possesses incredible speed and strength. He gets into the tank and the bats consider him as their leader. He later discovers that artificial blood can keep him stable for a very long time. Just before Morbius relapses into his monstrous state, Milo appears and helps him to control himself by handing him more blood samples. Milo learns that Morbius is cured now and wants to be injected with the serum too, but Morbius refuses since it's still uncontrollable. Milo insists and Morbius has to expel him from the lab. The FBI agents approach Martine and question her about the horrifying incident, but she refuses to answer them. Still that evening, a nurse is attacked by a vampiric creature. Morbius later learns that a nurse has been killed, indicating that he wasn't the perpetrator. Just before he leaves, the agents confront him, questioning him about doing a crazy experiment on the ship. They attempt to arrest him, but Morbius fights back and attacks them. He subsequently tries to flee by climbing to the top of the hospital with his power. But he is soon apprehended and taken to a detention center. 
Stroud and Rodriguez interrogate him and accuse him of killing the nurse. Morbius slowly becomes unstable and kindly requests the agent to bring him the artificial blood, but they leave without handing him what he asked. Not long after, he is visited by Milo, who gives him a pack of artificial blood before he leaves. However, he forgets to bring his cane with he and Morbius eventually realize that Milo took the serum for himself, meaning that he is the one who killed the innocent nurse. He then transforms into the vampiric monster again and breaks out of the facility, trying to chase after his best friend. Meanwhile, Milo also becomes a monster and kills a man. Morbius confronts Milo warns him that the power is dangerous, but he refuses to stop and attacks his best friend instead. They end up in a subway the station where several officers arrive to arrest Milo. But he kills all of them effortlessly. Milo insists that he wants to fight Morbius, who rather chooses to flee through the tunnel. The agents appear at the crime scene and think that Morbius is the one who slaughtered all the officers. On the other hand, Martine is finally discharged from the hospital. In the morning, Morbius approaches her on a bus where he explains his condition and Milo to her. He also asks for her help since the artificial blood is losing its effectiveness to restrain the monster within him. After that, he follows two thugs from the cafe to their lab where he politely asks them to hand over their laboratory to him. A man tries to stab him, but he is just no match for him. The other thugs run away and he continues developing a serum that will be used to prevent him from transforming. On the other hand, Milo goes to a nightclub where he flirts with a beautiful woman, but a tough the guy is not happy with that. Fortunately, he still manages to control his power. Later that evening, he follows the man and his friends and then slaughters them all. The agents and several officers break into Martinez's place, but cannot find anyone there. Turns out Martin is working with Morbius in his new lab where they eventually kiss. Unbeknownst to them, Milo observes them from a distance. The following day, the FBI agents find the dead clubgoers and they learn through the surveillance camera that Milo is the real culprit all this time, not Morbius. After learning about the massacre from the news, Dr. Nicholas speaks to Milo who is scaring him because of his obsession with the new superpower. They then get into an argument after Milo expresses his disappointment because Nicholas has always chosen Morbius as his favorite child over him. He attacks the doctor, leaving him severely wounded. Back to Morbius, he eventually has finished developing an antibody, which is harmful to his vampiric body, and plans to inject the poison into his body and Milo's. A few moments later, he receives a call from Nicholas and rushes to his location. Unfortunately, Morbius is too late as he dies when he arrives, Milo sneaks into their laboratory and kidnaps Martine. Using his superpower, Morbius manages to locate her and immediately reaches her, but she is also severely injured by Milo. Running out of time, Martine allows him to suck her blood to go after Milo, but a small a drop of his blood falls into Martine's mouth. The furious Morbius attacks his best friend and the fight between two vampiric monsters ensues. They both fly and crash until they arrive at an underground tunnel where Morbius summons a, a horde of bats and uses them to surround Milo. Morbius uses this opportunity to approach Milo injects him with the antibody. He immediately loses his strength and eventually dies. Just as the police arrive, Morbius, covered by a horde of bats, flies away while Martine is revived as a vampire. During the post-credits scene, a multiversal rift from the Spider-Man movie opens up and Adrian Toomes eventually ends up in this universe. He is somehow released from his cell and meets up with Morbius, offering him to team up for the greater good. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.